In this video, I'll explain the rules of exponents. So let's begin with a definition. Uh, if a is a real number and n is a positive integer, we define a to the n to be a times a times a times a n number of times. So what we have here are n factors. As a quick example, 2 to the third power is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 with three factors which turns out to be 8. Now, don't confuse 2 to the third power with 2 times 3. 2 times 3 is equal to 2 plus 2 plus 2, which is 6. Our first rule says that a to the n times a to the m is equal to a to the n plus m. Now, why is this true? Now, with each of these rules, I'm going to give an example that will hopefully illustrate to you why the rule works. So let's begin with uh, 7 squared times 7 cubed. Now, according to the rule, the answer should be 7 to the fifth power. So why is it 7 to the fifth? Well, 7 squared means this. 7 cubed means this. If we get rid of the parentheses, what we have are a total of five sevens, so we have 7 to the fifth power. So you see why we added the 2 plus the 3. We had two sevens here and three sevens here, so we have a total of five sevens. The next rule says that a to the n raised to the mth power is equal to a to the n times m. So again, why is this true? Now let's use an example that's real similar to the previous one. Only instead of doing 7 squared times 7 cubed, let's do 7 squared cubed. Now 7 squared means 7 times 7. And if we cube that, we'll be multiplying 7 times 7 by itself three times. This gives us a total of 6 sevens when we remove the parentheses. So we have 7 to the 6th power. So why did we end up multiplying 2 times 3? Well, you see here we have three groups of two sevens. And 3 times 2 gives you 6. The next rule says that a to the n over a to the m is equal to a to the n minus m. So again, why is this true? If we take 9 to the fifth over 9 squared, According to the rule, the answer should be 9 cubed. Okay, 9 to the 5 minus 2. But why does the rule work? Well, 9 to the 5th power means this. 9 squared means this. Now notice we can cancel a 9 here with a 9 here. And we can also do it again. And what we're left with are 3 9s. 9 times 9 times 9, or 9 cubed. So why did we subtract? Why did we do 5 minus 2? Well, if you notice on the top, we have 5 9s, but 2 of those 9s got canceled with the 2 9s on the bottom. So what we're left with is 3 9s on the top. a to the 0 power is equal to 1. So any number raised to the 0 power is equal to 1. Well, there's one exception. Uh, a itself uh, cannot be 0. Uh, 0 to the 0th power is not defined. But anything other than 0 raised to the 0th power will equal 1. So this seems a little bit weird. At least it seemed weird to me the first time I saw it. I thought I would think that something to the 0th power would be 0. But why uh, do we define it to be 1? Well, it turns out that, uh, let's look at the example 5 cubed over 5 cubed. Now, of course, uh, we know that that's equal to 1, right? Anything divided by itself is going to be 1. But according to the previous rule, 5 cubed over 5 cubed is equal to 5 to the 3 minus 3, or 5 to the 0 power. So what we see here is that 5 to the 0 power turns out to actually equal 1. Okay, it's kind of a roundabout way of looking at it, but that is one way to see uh, why it should be the case that 5 to the 0 is 1, for example. a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the n. Now, before we talk about why this is true, let's look at a couple quick examples uh, over here. Uh, for example, um, 5 to the negative third power is equal to 1 over... 5 to the positive third. Okay, or in other words, 1 over 125. Okay, 4 to the negative 2 power is equal to 1 over 4 to the positive 2, which is equal to 1 over 16. 
Okay, now why does this work? Okay, why, is, why do we define a to the negative n to equal 1 over a to the n? <clears throat> okay, one way to look at this is to take a look at 4 to the negative 2, and let's multiply it by 4 to the positive 2. And notice that according to the first rule, this should equal 4 to the negative 2 plus 2, okay, or 4 to the 0 power. But 4 to the 0 power, according to the previous rule, is 1. So what we see here is that 4 to the negative 2 times 4 to the positive 2 is equal to 1. Now if we take a look at both, uh, divide both sides of this equation, 4 to the negative 2 times 4 squared equals 1. And if we divide both sides of that by 4 squared, what we see is that we get 4 to the negative 2 is equal to 1 over 4 squared. Okay, so it sort of makes sense that 4 to the negative 2 should be 1 over 4 squared. Okay, again, that's a little bit of a roundabout way of, of looking at it, but that's one way to see it. Okay, the next example I think is maybe a little bit easier to, uh, to explain. Uh, a times b raised to the nth power is equal to a to the n times b to the n. So why should this be true? Let's look at uh, 9 times 2 raised to the fourth power. Okay, I know it's really 18 to the fourth power, but let's just leave it as 9 times 2 raised to the fourth power. Now, according to the rule, the answer should be 9 to the fourth times 2 to the fourth. So why is that the case? Well, 9 times 2 raised to the fourth power just means this. We multiply 9 times 2 by itself four times. Now, if we get rid of the parentheses, and uh, we end up with this. Okay, and of course we can rearrange the order that we multiply the terms in. And we could put all the 9's first and all the 2's later. And what we end up with is 9 to the 4th times 2 to the 4th. Okay, we have four 9's here, so that's 9 to the 4th. And then this over here is 2 to the 4th. Okay, so the rule makes sense. The seventh rule says that a over b raised to the nth power is equal to a to the n over b to the n. Okay, so why should this be the case? Now let's look at 9 halves raised to the fourth power. According to this rule, the answer should be 9 to the fourth over 2 to the fourth. But why is that the case? Well, 9 halves to the fourth power just means 9 halves times itself four times. Okay, when we multiply fractions, we just multiply across the top and multiply across the bottom. All right, multiplying and dividing fractions are, is easier than adding and subtracting. Uh, when we multiply and divide fractions, we don't have to get a common denominator. Okay, so what we see we have is 9 times 9 times 9 times 9 on the top of the fraction, and 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 on the bottom, and this is equal to 9 to the 4th over 2 to the 4th. So the rule makes sense. Okay, two more rules. a to the 1 over n power is equal to the nth root of a. Okay, now again, before we talk about why this is true, let's take a look at a couple examples. Um, 9 to the 1 half power is equal to the square root of 9. Now, notice there's an n in here. Uh, I could put a 2 in here, but usually when it's a 2, we don't put the 2 in there. Because when we're talking about a square root, if you just put the square root symbol with nothing in there, the number in there is assumed to be 2. And the square root of 9 is equal to 3. So 9 to the 1 half power is equal to 3. Now, 8 to the 1 third power is equal to the cube root of 8. Okay, so the cube root of 8 turns out that it's 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 8. Okay, or 125 to the 1 third power is equal to the cube root of 125, which turns out to be 5. Right, 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. Okay, so why should this rule work? <clears throat> so let's suppose we don't know what 17 to the 1 third power means. 
Let's suppose we don't realize that 17 to the 1 3rd power really means the cube root of 17. Okay, and let, let's suppose we take 17 to the 1 3rd and raise it to the 3rd power. We cube it. Well, according to, I think it was rule number 2, this should equal 17 to the 1 3rd times 3, which is equal to 17 to the 1, which is equal to 17. So what we see here is that this number inside here, whatever it is, it turns out that when you cube it, you e it equals 17. So this number inside here should be the cube root of 17. Okay, because when we cube this number, uh, we get 17. So that number in there should be the cube root. So 17 to the 1 3rd power should equal the cube root of 17. <clears throat> Okay, again, that's a little bit of a roundabout way of looking at things, uh, but that's one explanation. Now, what if we have uh, a to the, instead of 1 over n, we have a to the m over n. So, uh, as an example of this, let's suppose we have 8 to the 2 thirds power. What does this mean? Well, there's a couple ways of looking at it. One way is that it's equal to the uh, a to the m then take the nth root, or you could take the nth root of a, then raise it to the mth power. So what this means in terms of 8 is that we could either write this as the cube root of 8 squared, and the cube root of 8 is 2, and so we have 2 squared, which gives us 4. So 8 to the 2 thirds power is equal to 4. Okay, that's just a true statement. Now, another way of looking at 8 to the 2 thirds power, though, is that we could have squared the 8 first and then done the cube root. Okay, you could either do the cube root first and then square it, or square it first and then the, do the cube root. So what this says is it's equal to the cube root of 64. And the cube root of 64 turns out to be 4, because 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. Okay, so why does this work? Okay, why is a to the m over n equal to the nth root of a to the m? Okay, and also why is it equal to the nth root of a raised to the nth power? Okay, instead of just using an example, let's try to uh, um, just stick with the a. a to the m over n isn't that the same thing as a to the m raised to the 1 over n? Okay, now why is that the case? Well, m over n is equal to m times 1 over n. Okay, so notice that if we were to try to simplify a to the m raised to the 1 over n, we would multiply these two, and when we multiply them, we get m over n. So this is just a true statement, okay? And this is equal to the nth root of a to the m. Because when you raise something to the 1 over n power, you're taking the nth root of it. Okay, so what we see here is that this um, is equal to this. Okay, now why is this also equal to this? Okay. Well, let's look at a to the m over n again. And m over n, one way of writing it is that it's equal to m times 1 over n, or you could write it as 1 over n times m, right? It doesn't matter which order you multiply them in. There's some scratch work over here. Uh, so we could write this as a to the 1 over n raised to the mth power. So again, because if we were trying to simplify this, we would multiply 1 over n times m, and we would get m over n. Okay, but this is just equal to the nth root of a all raised to the mth power, because a to the 1 over n, according to the previous rule, is the nth root of a.